Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome back to the fourth video in the Level 3 Circular Motion series. And in this video, I want to look at vertical circular motion, so an object that's following a circular path, um, but is doing so in a vertical plane. And specifically, I want to um, look at the force diagrams. Now, there's two types of, of vertical circles. Um, there's ones where the object's going at a constant speed, and others where it's not going at a constant speed. It's, its speed slows down as it gets to the top and speeds up as it gets to the bottom. So this video, video four, is going to be on things going at a constant speed, and then I'll do another video, video five, um, with objects not going at a constant speed. So an object that's going around a vertical circular at a, a constant speed, when I go to draw the force diagrams, and we really care this year about the forces at the top and the bottom, is, is really what we're going to get into. Um, I'm always thinking of the force diagram and thinking of the total force at the same time in my head and it helps me to, to get through to the right answer. So here's my circle and there's my bucket. I'm thinking about it at the bottom to start with. Um, it has the force of gravity on it, I know that. But I also am thinking about the total force and the total force in a circle is towards the center. So I've got my total force pointing upwards in this case. So then I say to myself, <coughs> what other forces do I need and how big must they be so that the total force points upwards? And the only th other thing connected to the bucket is um, the string there. So there must be a tension force pointing upwards when the bucket's at the bottom. And that tension force has to be bigger than gravity so that the total points upwards, which is what I've got on my left there. So let's think about when the bucket's at the top. So it's still going around at a constant speed. Um, and again, I think about my force diagram and my total force at the same time. So gravity, it still has gravity. My total force is now going to be downwards because it's always towards the center of the circle and at the top, the center of the circle is down from the top. So therefore, which way must the tension force or the other force be? It has to be also downwards and those two add up to give my total force on the left there. And that makes sense. I've got um, tension forces uh, are, are caused by ropes, and the rope's always pulling towards the center. That's the way the rope is, is pointed. Um, and that's the way the total force is. What changes in the situation as it goes around is the size of the tension force. Down the bottom, you can see it's a, quite a large tension force pointing upwards, and at the top, it's quite a small tension force pointing downwards. And so the way that feels differently is the bucket feels heavier to us at the bottom and lighter to us at the top because of that tension force. So now let's look at it if we're still going at a constant speed, but a faster constant speed. Okay, <clears throat> If it's going at a faster velocity, we know the total force in circular motion is always given by this mv squared over r. Larger v means we're going to have a larger total force. So when we go to draw these again, so the top ones are just the same speed I had as before as a reference. These new ones are now at a faster speed. Down the bottom there you can see the total force is bigger because it's moving quicker. Gravity hasn't changed. It's the same bucket. So that's the same size force. So in order to get my total force to be bigger, I need a bigger tension force than my original diagram. And the same when it's at the top, the total force points downwards. It's now a bigger total force. Gravity hasn't changed. So I need a larger tension force pointing downwards in order to make my total force larger. What if the bucket's going slower? Well, a slower velocity, same thing, total force is equal to mv squared over r. You get a smaller number for v in that formula, you're going to get a smaller total force out, which means our total force arrow is going to be smaller. So let's draw our diagrams again. If the bucket's at the bottom, the total force is now smaller. Gravity hasn't changed. It's the same bucket, same force of gravity but the tension force is going to be smaller, so that my total is still pointing upwards, but it's just a bit smaller. Same when it's at the top. Total force is down, it's now smaller because it's going slower. Gravity is pointing down, and my tension force is just a really tiny one. You can extend this idea of the bucket going sm slower and the tension force getting smaller and smaller until you get to the point where um, the tension force upwards is only just bigger than gravity force downwards, and at the top, Gravity force downwards is the same size arrow as the total force. You don't need tension force in there. So I, I can't stress that enough. This is the slowest speed we can get to. We're at the top of the circle. The force of gravity provides the total force. There is no tension force. 
And interestingly, if we tried to go slower than this, the water would fall out of the bucket. So we call this speed the minimum speed. This is the minimum speed when the gravity force at the top provides all the force it needs to go around the circle. Um, we can do a bit of maths there because gravity, force of gravity is the total force. We can write that mathematically. And we've got a formula for both of these. The force of gravity is mass times um, gravitational field strength. And <coughs> total force is mv squared over r. There's a mass on both sides, so they cancel out. And you get g equals v squared over r. Then you can rearrange that to find v. What is this minimum speed where any slower than that, the water would fall out? So the minimum speed is square root r over g. That's something that um, occasionally, once every two years, or once every three years, you will need to be able to do uh, in your end of year exam. So we've looked at vertical circles today, um, the forces, and then we uh, finish this off with a calculation or a rearranging of formulas when we get to the minimum speed.